Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of C Sharp and .NET development, VS Code for Beginners. Uh, in the last episode, we talked all about how easy it is to install VS Code and C Sharp Dev Kit, and now we are getting to the good stuff. We're actually going to start writing a C Sharp application. And in this episode, we are specifically going to focus on creating your very first .NET project within VS Code and also learn about the Solution Explorer and how that window can help you easily manage all of your different projects that you've got going on. But before I do that, I do want to uh, include a little addendum to the previous episode. Something that I mentioned in episode one was that C Sharp Dev Kit is compatible with code spaces. And just to let you know that that is, in fact, true, here I am in a code space for uh, the repo that I'm going to be using for the remainder of this series. And you'll notice the little C Sharp dev kit icon in the bottom right corner there. We've got the Solution Explorer going on here. So it's a near identical experience using and developing C Sharp in a code space as it is on your local machine. So just wanted to give that a little heads up. And now from here on out, we're going to talk all about project management. So when you first boot up VS Code, whether you have C Sharp dev kit or not, you are going to be welcomed with a workspace that looks like this. So this is the workspace window that opens depending on what folder you've currently decided to open up. So I've got a folder called Codal dash dev devkit <laughs> dash demo. As for what the heck Codal is, I will explain it in a minute. But you know, it's got a bunch of different files. Anything that can be found in a folder in File Explorer can be displayed here. So stuff like uh, .gitignore, because this is actually a git repo that I started, a global.json, markdown files, .cs files, anything that is in that folder will show up here, which you may not always want. You know, some of these, folder, uh, some of these files aren't always the most relevant things that you could be looking at, uh, whether it's a file or a folder. So like .gitignore, you probably don't care about that when you're just trying to look at all of your project-related files and the relationship between each of your projects. So in order to streamline that experience, that is where the Solution Explorer window comes from. The Solution Explorer is something you're probably already familiar with if you use the Visual Studio IDE. But this is another way of viewing all of your files from the context of all the different projects that are being contained inside a .sln or a solution file. So the .solution file or .sln is basically just a container for representing all the different projects that make up your wider um, .NET or C Sharp application. And in order to trigger the Solution Explorer, in our case, we're, we're actually going to need to create a project because we currently don't have one of those. <laughs> so to give some context as to what we're going to be doing for the rest of this series is we're writing a game called Codal, which is very similar to the game called Wordle, <laughs> if you've ever played that under the New York Times umbrella. But if you haven't played Wordle as a brief how do you play, it's kind of similar to the game Mastermind, where you have the goal of trying to guess a five-letter word in five tries or less. And each time that you provide a guess, the game will let you know the status of each letter. So for each letter, it will tell you if that letter exists in the word and is in the right position. And in that case, it will be highlighted green. The letter will be highlighted yellow if the letter is in the word, but it's in the wrong position. And then finally, if the word or if the letter does not exist in the word at all, then it will be highlighted gray. So we're going to make a very similar game with the same rules, except I thought it would be really fun and nerdy <laughs> to have all of the potential words or potential answers be programming related, hence the word codal. So sorry, I like my puns. Sorry, not sorry. And uh, if you'd like to follow along from this episode and onward, the link to the corresponding source code is below. And for this particular episode, you can swap on over to the project management branch to see exactly what I'm seeing right now. And so now it is time to write our, or write, I should say, add our first project. So to do that, we've got a couple ways of doing it. We can access it from the Solution Explorer, but I want to highlight the command palette real quick which is accessed by the only keyboard shortcut you will ever need to remember for VS Code, which is Control-Shift-P. And this is a really cool window and makes up the core 
aside from extensions of what VS Code is all about. It is a massive window that gives you a bunch of different command and task options that you can choose to execute directly from this window. So it's like having both a search function and a command execution function all in one window. So Control Shift P, remember that one. That is the only keyboard shortcut you'll you'll ever need as somebody who is really bad at remembering <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. And you this window continues to expand as you continue to add different extensions, and C Sharp Dev Kit is no ex, uh, no exception. So if I were to write .NET up top here, then I'll get access to a lot of related um, commands that I can choose to to use here. One of which is new project. So I'm going to select .NET new project. And from there, C Sharp Dev Kit gives you a dropdown of a bunch of different project templates that I can start with. Going the template route is really nice because it saves you the trouble of having to set up all of this um, initial not so fun, almost kind of framework type code that you need to actually get your app to run successfully. Uh, VS Code, in this case, will do all of that for you with this template. And essentially, once you get that, once you select that template as your project, you could easily just hit F5 right from there without you having to add any additional code, and it should run successfully. So <laughs> you have the confidence knowing that you have a working project from the jump, and from there you can expand it and go wild with whatever it is that you want to accomplish from there. So in my case, I want to create a web app using the Blazor WebAssembly app. And Blazor, just to give a brief definition, is a really cool open source web framework that takes the power of .NET, C Sharp, and HTML to let you build full stack web, web apps without having to write any JavaScript um, as part of your front end. So if you're like me and JavaScript isn't quite your forte, <laughs> then uh, going the Blazor route is really nice because as long as you know C Sharp or you're familiar with C Sharp and familiar with HTML, it's very easy to set up a front end experience with Blazor. So from there, we are going to select that template and then I got to name it. So I'm going to call mine Codal and then choose your directory. I'm going to choose the default. And there it is. So you'll notice that that project also gets added to your regular workspace environment. But I think for the remainder of this particular episode, I'm going to hang out with the Solution Explorer for the most part and take a look at this. So now you can see you have a very streamlined experience from the perspective of projects. So when I created that first project, I have a solution that was created called Codal as well. And again, you can <laughs> check it out in the workspace. You can see the .sln file in action if you really want to see the full details here. And you can use both windows at the same time, which is nice. So if you do care about some of these other miscellaneous files that don't necessarily relate directly to projects, then you can look at that too. All right, so I've got my Codal web app started here. That's all well and good. But now I need to actually add an additional project because this game isn't going to be anything unless we have game logic attached to it at the end of the day. So fortunately for us, I've already created a project that contains all of the game logic and all of the game evaluation that is needed for the user to actually play this game successfully. And it's called um, Codal Logic. So let's go ahead and add an existing project using the Solution Explorer. So I can right click the solution up top and then select Add Existing Project. And we'll navigate over to the project that I'm interested in, which is Codal Logic. And then I'm going to select the .csproj file. And there we are. Pretty simple. So I've got my Codal Logic project. And if you want to know what's really going on here, again, it's um, basically just a bunch of evaluation of the rules. Specifically, the get guest statuses method here is going to evaluate the the user's guess and see if it matches up with the word. Or if not, it's going to see uh, the status of the letter. Is it correct? Is it incorrect? Or is it just in the wrong position? That sort of thing. And at this point, we've got two projects. But we still can't really do anything uh, with Codal Logic because the Codal project doesn't really know that Codal Logic exists yet. And that's because we haven't added a project reference to it. So to do that, we can right click on Codal and select Add Project Reference. 
And then you'll get a drop down of all the different projects that you've got in your solution that you can add a reference to. And just to make it cooler and easier to see, I'm actually going to open up the csproj file for Codal before I do that. All right, so let's add Codal logic. And you'll see that the csproj file for Codal got populated with a new product reference that is referencing Codal logic. So this is something that you can do via the Solution Explorer, and it will automatically add this for you, which is great. But if you really want to do it manually, you can do that as well. Personally, I don't like to go the manual route because uh, it invites user error. <laughs> and I don't want to spend my time debugging just because I got the area path or the, the relative path wrong or something like that. So the option is there, though. <laughs> and from there, we've got a project that is able to reference the Codal Logic project for all of our game logic. And now we actually need to go ahead and add a related file <laughs> where we can implement the game itself. So under Pages, and all of this is a result of the template that I'm using here, which is really cool. So when we hit F5 at the end of this particular episode, you're going to see some stuff up there that I didn't code, but that's because it was part of the template, which is nice. But I am going to expand the Pages uh, folder that's here with a new file, which I can add directly from the Solution Explorer. And like when we were creating a new project, you also get a drop down of the different file templates that you can use. So you can create a class template, an enum template, a razor component. That sounds pretty close to what I want. <laughs> and so many other options. So I'm going to kick things off with a razor component, which is part of the, the Blazor makeup when you're doing a Blazor application. So I'm going to name the file. I don't want to call it pages. So let's call it play. Codal. All right, so there is our Razor file. It's already been started for us, and we're almost good to go here. But just to make sure that I can actually take advantage of the Codal logic methods and stuff later, I'm going to go ahead up top here and add an at using command. So let's do at using Codal logic. All right, and so at this point, we're, I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and just build what we have and make sure that I didn't break anything <laughs> by just adding some new projects and methods here and making sure that the template itself still works fine. So you have a couple ways to go ahead and start to build your application. You can do it directly from the Solution Explorer. You can also do it via run and debug. And you, of course, can also do it via the command palette or Control shift p if you do .NET build. But in my case, I'm just going to use good old F5, which you can also access by just going to run and hitting the F5. And something that I want to highlight here that's just really cool <laughs> in general about C Sharp Dev Kit is that it's never been easier to just go ahead and run your application. It's easy to take for granted now once you have the C Sharp Dev Kit extension installed, but if you didn't have that installed, you'd have to configure a separate JSON file and do all of this other work that you don't want to do. You just you just want to be able to run your code, dang it. <laughs> so that's what C Sharp Dev Kit brings to the table. Now, um, if you're experiencing a slightly different experience, because maybe this is the first time you're actually um, hitting F5 on your code, uh, I cheated a little bit and was running some of this earlier, you might be prompted with a drop down as to which debugger you want to attach to. For this particular experience, if you're using, if you're writing a C Sharp application, then you should go for the C Sharp option in the drop down, just as a heads up. And now here we are with the template-based project experience. So all of this was set up on our behalf for me. I didn't write any of this code. But it's nice to know that it is working successfully. We've got a counter here where we can increment it when we click a button. We can see some random weather forecast information. So I think we're good. I didn't break anything. Yay. <laughs> so now all that's missing at this point is the actual codal game that I said we we're going to code up. But I'm going to save that for the next episode. So to recap what we talked about in this episode, we talked all about the power of project management and VS Code with C Sharp Dev Kit attached, specifically how the Solution Explorer can give you 
a different way of viewing all of your different files from the perspective of all the various projects that you've got going on and the relationships with, e with each other. It automatically filters out files that you may not necessarily care about, such as your .cs proj file or your .git ignores or your markdown files or anything like that. But as always, you can choose to use both if that's something that you care about, or you can just choose to use one. So you've got your options. So thank you so much for joining me on the project management space today. So tune in next time when we actually get to some really meaty stuff, which is writing some code and checking out some cool productivity features in the editor as we do it. So stay tuned and happy coding.